Welcome back to FLJ, ladies and gentlemen, Michael here. Many argue for so-called rolling distros like Arch, for instance, to get the latest Linux kernel and thus the latest drivers. But for the latest kernel, you don't necessarily have to use a rolling distro. There are also static distros like Fedora or Pop, which also deliver fresh kernels. What this is all about, what advantages and disadvantages it offers, we will deal with it now. Have fun! Yes, it might seem like a culture shock to some, but it's true. Getting a new kernel does not require switching to a rolling distro, because rolling distro doesn't just mean new kernel, but all packages are continuously changing and updated whenever there are new versions available. So the system might not be so quiet anymore. Accordingly, you have good changes to update a rolling system several times on the same day. And generally, with rolling distros, it is recommended to update at shortest possible interval. Every few days, or at latest weekly, is more or less standard. But then, there are sometimes hundreds of megabytes or gigabytes for updates coming in. But this does not have to be. Because the world is not only light and dark, not only day and night. Like a color scale, there are many shades and nuances. So also with Linux distributions. There is not only Ubuntu LTS or Debian Stable on the one side and OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and Arch on the other. No, no. The portfolio of our friend Tux is much more extensive. In between, there is place for distros like Fedora or Pop. Because both are static versions, so Linux distros that release new versions with new packages and software in certain intervals. But as a thread on top, these two distros always deliver the latest kernel, not immediately after release, but with some time in between until it is proven that everything is stable and the system runs well with the new kernel. Thus, as of today, for example, end of March 2023, both POP OS 2204 and Fedora 37 ship the GNU Linux kernel 6.2. At the same time, Ubuntu, for example, is shipping kernel 5.19 for versions 22.04 and 22.10. So, no longer the latest mainline kernel. Now, we wouldn't be in the Linux world if there was only one or the other decision, right? There are always pros and cons, which, from a certain point of view, sometimes represent the subjective and perceived truth, but sometimes also the naked truth. At this point, I am not interested in presenting one or the other model as better or worse. Therefore, let's look at both the advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are clearly on the table. Static version distro means it is a stable base, which is modernized in parts but remains unchanged in its foundations until a successor version and only gets security updates. Thus Fedora always delivers a new kernel and also accordingly supplied GNOME version is quite current however the following GNOME version is received for the following Fedora version. Thus the current newest version Fedora 37 is kept up to date with GNOME 43.3. But a few days ago GNOME 44 was released which will then debut in April with Fedora 38. Fedora 37 will not receive GNOME 44. Along with that, Fedora users will always get new software stack with the next release. But the Linux kernel, for example, will also be updated in Fedora 37. With POP it is again somewhat different, since POP is in principle an LTS distro and they are converted. The basis of POP OS 2204 is Ubuntu 2204 LTS, but System76, the company behind POP, intervences at various points and modifies the Linux distribution according to its own ideas. This includes for example the complete GNOME desktop, which is also titled differently in POP with Cosmic Desktop. But apart from the surface, POP always delivers the current kernel and that despite LTS substructure. The interims version of Ubuntu had also led POP in the past, but since Ubuntu 22.10 this model has suspended and they concentrate on the LTS version. However, there are several reasons for this. System76 is currently completely rebuilding the Cosmic Desktop and thus saying goodbye to GNOME Shell. This ties up developer resources, so the priority was put on Cosmic and not on an interims version with GNOME Shell, which makes also sense. Occasionally, packages are backported from the Ubuntu SDS versions to POP OS 2204, but this only in manageable scope, which is not bad. 
Both distros originate from commercial companies. Fedora has the fingers of Red Hat and the US hardware manufacturer System76 is behind PopOS. Both companies are profit-oriented, which should not be unusual for a company. Profit-oriented doesn't have to mean capitalistic, but can mean offering employees a solid basis so they can concentrate on their job without worries. After all, that could apply to System76. As far as the fate of Red Hat employees after the IPM takeover is concerned, I lack reliable information about this. But from experiences from US companies, the margin is often put absolutely in the foreground, which could also include System76. But it is electric that the distros follow the ideas of the companies. The users or community don't influence on the development of the distro. This is decided elsewhere. With POP, the decision-making power lies fully with System76. With Fedora, it does not lie formally with Red Hat, but in the end, the involved voluntary Fedora developers cannot deny themselves decisions of Red Hat de facto. Who pays the band determines what is played. Therefore, both distros are united by their direct or indirect dependence on US companies. So if you place the highest value on ethical principles such as non-profit, then the distros that are developed by a community rather than a company are likely to have the edge. Beyond constitutional circumstances, there are also users who deliberately want to use an individual built system and they are always the latest of the greatest software. The principle of always obtaining and using the latest software is a core feature of rolling distros. That means there are no release versions like EG Fedora 37 or 38 or Pop OS 2204, but in the month an image is provided which serves as basis for the installation. Monthly is published so that after installation under circumstances gigabytes of updates must not be downloaded. But these monthly images do not represent a new version as in the sense of Pop or Fedora. Who would like to have thus in principle always fresh in new packages with Pop and Fedora will not be happy. Certain components are top current from the version status similar to a rolling distro. Nevertheless, the principle of static versions does not follow that of rolling distros. Stability is prioritized higher than package actuality. Critics of static version distros see this as an outdated model of software distribution. Conversely, critics of rolling distros see this as a not fully reliable system that does not come with a comparable high level of quality in the fine tuning of packages. Linux has many phases and facets. This dedication to diversity is sometimes inspiring and sometimes frustrating. Linux offers the strength that other desktop operating systems like Windows or Mac OS lack. There are versions of Linux that range from incredibly stable to technically innovate and incredibly progressive. Linux covers the needs of enterprise and the cloud and server environment equal as fully as it does on the desktop. Especially on the desktop a rich bandwidth is offered. This starts with the highest possible stability as offered by Debian Stable, Ubuntu, LTS or OpenSUSE Leap, for example. Distros like Pop or Fedora, which correspond to neither the one nor the other bandwidth, can be seen as intermediate stations. Rolling distros are to be found in the progressive field. But here, too, there are diversification. For some come with a minimum quality insurance like OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, try it with tested images or Mancharo with a grace period until new software is released. For those who want to put their thumbs directly on the pulse of development, Arch and forks of Arch like Endeavor OS, Garuda or Archcraft offer new software in the package sources as soon as it is released. Thus we see that Linux ensures the greatest possibility potential for releasing among Linux distributions. A majority of Linux users are likely to use either static or rolling distros. The gap between the two is quite wide and approaches like Pop or Fedora try to achieve a certain balancing act. The thought behind it is clearly completely plausible. With LTS distributions, an LTS kernel is usually used, which is ostensibly maintained by security updates against known vulnerabilities. The Linux kernel also supplies the necessary drivers for hardware. 
although user can compile newer drivers themselves with some effort and thus bring them into the system, the effort and the benefit should clearly be weighed against each other. Ubuntu tries to counteract this by providing backported kernels from the Ubuntu interims versions for the LTS versions from time to time as part of the hardware enablement stack. However, the backported kernels are not the latest generation and thus the drivers are not either. As kernel development progresses, so does the driver development and drivers are provided to a Linux system via the kernel. New drivers mean on the one hand that brand new hardware can be supported but also that existing drivers can be improved in their performance which is reflected in a better system performance. Especially with graphic drivers this is interesting for example when gaming. The advantage of Pop and Fedora is obvious. New kernel in connection with stable and tested system robustness. This seems to pay off as the distros are often recommended for Linux gamers when it comes to gaming under Linux and distros based on Fedora such as Nubara or Pop are mentioned. A further aspect which speaks for these distros is that the general maintenance expenditure with the system generates turns out lower than example with rolling distros. The risk of package compatibility problems is generally lower so that Linux users without in-depth knowledge should generally get along better with Fedora or Pop than with Arch and Arch forks. In the end we conclude that Linux offers you the right approach for you. Highest possible stability? Then turn Debian, Ubuntu LTS or OpenSUSE Leap. Highest possible up-to-dateness? Then Arch, Archforks or OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Best possible compromise between the before mentioned categories, then Pop or Fedora. What will you choose or what have you already chosen? Please write it in the comments. It is also very interesting for me to know what makes you tick at this point. So keep the comments glowing. And while we are at it, to stay tuned for more videos from me, a free channel subscription is recommended. If you click the thumbs up button and activate the bell, you are also doing something good for my channel. And then you will also be notified when I provide new videos. I already say thank you. Oh yes, the best comments I reserve to pin and give a heart. So feel free to start now. So see you soon ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice week. Till the next time. Peace.